Serious chainsaw milling with a battery chainsaw. Does it work? I'll share my own experience, but first, some context. You'll find plenty of videos on chainsaw milling. It's slower and less efficient than using a sawmill, for many reasons, but especially because the cutters on a chainsaw are several times as wide as the blade of a bandsaw, so you have to cut several times as much wood. But using a chainsaw has some major advantages, like you don't have to move the log from where it fell, and you don't have to buy and maintain a sawmill. Even compared to small portable sawmills, it's easier to just carry a chainsaw and a rig into the forest. There are many ways to do it, including real horizontal and vertical milling jigs like those from Granberg, minimal vertical jigs like the Timber Tough, there are knockoff and DIY versions of those jigs, and some hardcore people can even do it freehand with no jig at all. Some people don't take chainsaw milling seriously, but they should. Then you've got battery chainsaws. For many years, these were really small and not taken seriously, but in the past five years that has all changed. Serious arborists were early adopters of the small one-handed battery saw for bucking and pruning, which are great for when you're up in a tree. Around 2018, medium-powered saws with 1-2 to two kilowatts of power began to be common, and since 2023, we've seen saws with over 3 kilowatts of power. This is almost entirely due to improving battery technology. So full disclosure, I am a huge fan of battery saws. I've owned serious gas saws before, and I hated all of their drawbacks, like breathing toxic fumes, the teeth rattling noise and vibration, the buying and mixing gasoline and oil, carburetors dying on me in the humid climate. Finally, in 2023, I bought this electric beast and sold my Husky. In the two years since then, many other powerful saws have come out from Ego, Milwaukee, even Ryobi, and Greenworks itself has released amazing new saws. Some people still don't take battery chainsaws seriously, but they should. Now, the intersection. As of 2024, you'll find a few videos online of people attempting to mill with small battery saws. There are some serious drawbacks. The bars are very short, it's incredibly slow, the saw can overheat, the battery can overheat. I did it myself with a little Makita saw, so I'll say you can mill this way, especially if you have small diameter logs, nice soft wood like pine or cypress, lots of batteries and or patience, and definitely required sufficient masochism. But what about milling with a bigger, more serious battery saw? I've been doing this for two years now, and I am pleased to report that with a sufficiently powerful saw, things get a lot better. First, we change out the standard cross-cutting chain for a ripping chain. It cuts a little better, and for something as intense as milling, every bit counts, so it's worth doing. You can see the teeth are different, kind of like a skip tooth with skinnier cutters in between. I like using a wheelbarrow to carry everything, the saw, the jigs, the batteries, and other tools, across difficult terrain to the log. Here is the 12-foot log I've been working on. It's a species from Australia, Eucalyptus robusta, aka swamp mahogany. The mature red hardwood is very hard and dulls chainsaws quickly. For North American comparison, it's similar in hardness to white oak, and it gets even harder as it ages. This log began at around two foot diameter, but was allowed to age for six years until the bark and some of the sapwood fell away, leaving 22 inches of hard, rot-resistant heartwood. Here is the milling plan. The red circle is the original size of the log, yellow are the cuts I've already made, the next is a vertical cut to make a nice big 2x13 slab, followed by a few easier cuts. This will make a decent 4x6. This will remove a low quality 2x6 around the pith. Then, what I'm really after, a quality true 6x6. Here, I'm attaching my 82CS34 to a vertical milling jig, what Granberg calls their G555B edging mill, about 150 bucks or less on sale. When you put in a battery, and away we go! This is the actual speed of cutting which is why chainsaw milling videos should always be watched in time-lapse. The wood is so hard that even with a perfectly sharp chain and powerful saw, it's spitting mostly dust instead of chips. This kind of cut is hard even for a powerful gas saw, and it's a torture test for lithium batteries to put out large amounts of current continuously without resting. Battery saws have always been great for bucking up logs where you pause a bit between each cut, but until recently, they struggled to do long continuous cuts. I do swap batteries once during this big cut, not because the battery has run out, but simply to spread the work among the four batteries that I brought to the log. Phew, that is a heavy slab. Check its size, and yeah, that's 13 inches of heartwood. Now, we can clean up the site a bit, take off the vertical edging guide, and attach our horizontal milling jig. This is what Granberg calls their Alaskan Small Log Mill, G777, around 190 bucks or less on sale. Attached and ready to go. This cut goes much faster, not just because we're only cutting through 6 inches of wood, but also because this is very close to the pith of the tree, where the wood is weaker. 
Notice how the board is bending upward behind me? That's because eucalyptus almost always has a lot of internal tension, which is released as you cut through it. If you're unlucky, this can pinch your bar and make things really difficult, but in this case, it's actually helping to hold our cut open. Another quick cut gives a 2x6 around the pith. Here's an example of how being a little heavy can be a plus. Leaning my weight into the cut keeps it going. Our 2x6 is done and moved aside. Finally, we set the horizontal jig to a depth of 6 inches and make the last cut. I'm hoping to use this massive hardwood beam in a timber frame pergola in our front yard. When it seems like cutting is slowing down, that's probably because it's time to stop and sharpen the chain. A standard sharpening guide doesn't work for the strange cutters of a ripping chain, so I use my drill like a Dremel freehand. It's not great, but it works. Now we can finish cutting the 6x6. I can show you from the other side so it's easier to see. One more battery swap. It's hard to cut this close to the ground without running into obstacles, so I come at it from the other side to finish. And yeah, there's a beautiful hardwood beam and my powerful battery chainsaw made it possible. Don't forget to click that like button.